Hello, my name is Kimberly Hilton and welcome to my art studio. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to make a graded wash that looks like this one. And um, I'm going to go over the list of materials and then I'm going to even show you how to make a little um, blotter with a roll of toilet paper and paper towels. Um, so um, I just want you to have everything that you need. Um, I guess the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you this is a used up roll of um, paper towels or toilet paper that I keep in my art room. Now I cover this with either a sock or um, some paper towel. So what I'm going to do is take this is Viva paper towels but it doesn't matter. I usually use Bounty but um, I'm going to fold it in half and I have a long strip here uh, probably probably about four three or four feet long it doesn't really matter I actually cut it off so I, I folded it in half and now I'm just going to wrap it around the toilet paper like this and then you have a nice little blotter for um, blotting off the excess water from your watercolor brush. So um, that's really handy to have. I'm gonna set that up here. And um, let's see, I wanna set it to where you can see. I'm gonna be using a little store uh, gift card for um, scratching. Uh, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to um, show you how to make some mountains um, and then scratch out some texture with a store card. Now this was just practice that I did earlier trying to get the colors right. I like to um, do lots of practice in my sketchbook. I don't worry about um, how neat anything is. I'm just worried about um, what colors I want to use. So um, I do all that in my sketchbook and then when I'm ready to paint a painting, I uh, know what I'm going to do ahead of time. So that helps. Um, so you have your blotter. You're going to need some um, containers of water. And I like to use two or three. So you always have clean water, one for rinsing, one or two for rinsing, and uh, another one for clean. And these are uh, little, I use these as water pots, they're um, lids to laundry detergent, and these actually come from um, Tide, uh, the big ones with the pumps and they have little indentions that you can set your paintbrush on and uh, it acts as a brush holder. So I like those. This is this is what one looks like empty. Oh, just, <laughs> I just poured water. That, uh, there was a little water in that. I just poured it on my paper there. So I'm just gonna dab that up a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't doesn't do anything but this is just to show you I like making little um, backgrounds so when I'm ready to paint a landscape the um, the sky is already ready and dry and that makes it quicker when I'm ready to paint a landscape so um, this is um, I'm going to use a smaller this is five oh no it's six by four and a half inches Kilimanjaro. Um, let's see. Um, this is the Kilimanjaro um, 9 by 12 100% uh, cotton paper and um, it's $26.99 when I looked at the price online at Cheap Joe's. So it's cheaper. This is a watercolor block. You get 20 pages for that price. And it's a lot cheaper than Arches, which Arches is my favorite. And I normally use Arches, but I bought this the last time. Uh, I wanted to see if it was any good. And it's fairly decent. It's not as good as Arches. 
but um, I was able to paint this and I've painted some nice little paintings on it so you know it's it's good paper um, it buckles a little more than arches does but um, it's fine and this is actually I'm painting on the back I did uh, this earlier and I did I wasn't 100% satisfied with how how it turned out so um, I thought well I'll give it a go another go and I'll try painting on the back so I just taped it down I had cut that Kilimanjaro paper into four squares and so now I have um, a lot a lot more paper to use so um, the colors that I'm going to be using are um, I'm just going to use four colors today the paint's gray but I'm not going to use that in the sky I'm only going to use that when I get ready to paint the mountains for the sky and you don't even have to have that you could use neutral tint or you can mix all the colors to get a, um, a dark mountain color but um, I'm using French ultramarine blue and then I'm going to use quinacridone rose and uh, this is Naples yellow if you don't have Naples yellow you could probably use raw sienna or a yellow ochre and um, this is my um, Naples yellow this is my Naples yellow I'm not sure if I said the name right um, that is Naples Yellow by Windsor Newton. So this is the Naples Yellow in this little pan, and this is Pink Gray in this little pan. And then the Ultramarine Blue is here on my palette, and the um, Quinacridone Rose is here. So those are the colors that I'm going to be using. And um, I just wanted to show you step by step what I'm going to be doing. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a paintbrush and it doesn't really matter what kind right now, just uh, any old uh, round or whatever paintbrush will do. I'm going to pull out my colors. I guess I'm going to start with the lightest color first and I'm going to get this wet. If you have a dropper, um, I like to use a little dropper to help me wet my colors wake them up so they're ready to use and this is the ultramarine and it helps me remember which colors to dip into because they will be the wet colors and let me go ahead and wet the Payne's gray for later uh, if you don't have Payne's gray you can use neutral tint or burnt umber any any kind of dark color so here is my Naples yellow. This is my new favorite color. I've been using this a lot lately because I discovered it's a very useful color for painting skies, uh, the yellow in skies, because um, it's not real bad to turn green when you mix it with blue. So that's um, very useful. Raw Sienna is, uh, has a similar effect. So that's um, the, another choice color you can use and now I'm going to take a another paintbrush I didn't bother rinsing that paintbrush out because um, there's a lot of good paint on that paintbrush and I'm just gonna set it there on my water container so um, I don't waste any paint and I don't contaminate my colors so here's my blue and I'm gonna put it here I'm using ultramarine blue you could use um, you know cobalt blue or um, I guess you could use phthalo blue or whatever blue you want your results may be a little bit different if you use phthalo blue so but you try it with what you have so there's the ultramarine blue and I'm gonna move these paints and I'm going to get another paintbrush, set that there, and get out my rose color. So I'm going to put some rose here. And it's not going to take a lot of paint to do this little card, so I don't need to have out 
a whole lot. Now I'm just going to take a big brush. You can use a large round brush. You could use a flat brush, whatever you want, but just um, wet the paper. Now that your paints are mixed up, so I'm just wetting it with plain water. And it doesn't take long to wet this little small piece of paper. I have this tape down with washi tape. Washi, uh, or not necessarily washi tape, masking tape or painter's tape. It's useful to tape down your paper so, um, so the paper doesn't buckle and it also leaves very nice clean borders when you remove the tape. But, um, so I just wet that down and the next thing I'm going to do is make sure your paintbrush is clean and which this one is because I just used um, clear water on that and I'm going to take, I turned it sideways, I'm going to take the yellow color and I'm just going to paint, paint it down the middle. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do, um, I'm actually going to rinse this off. You don't have to, but I'm going to. And uh, blot it on your paper towel. And then pick up your next color. And I'm, I guess I'm going to pick up the, the ultramarine blue here. Okay. And then I'm going to... Um, Maybe take some of this uh, rose color and put it right here. Overlap it a little bit. And now I'm going to turn it over. I didn't have to do that, but I'm going to work on this side. And I'm going to just mix these two colors in almost like a purple color. And I'm going to... Um, paint it there okay so now I'm just going to um, let the colors blend on their own they're going to um, you can you can move your paper around to help to help them blend you can let the if you hold it like this the colors are gonna run down if you hold it like this they're going to run down that way or if you hold it like this they're going to run down this way so you can just move it around just kind of help the colors um, move with gravity um, and make sure if you have uh, paint on your tape to just kind of carefully wipe over the tape and um, draw off that paint so it doesn't run back on your paper now um, it's gonna take just a little while for this to dry so um, what we're gonna do is just let the let the colors blend into one another naturally we're not gonna take a hair dryer to it so um, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and um, I'm just going to come back after this has had time to dry and then we'll do the second part. So um, once you get to, to this stage and you start to let your paint dry, just walk away and um, do whatever you need to do. Uh, have lunch or whatever and then once this is dry you can come back and do the second part. But on this paper, it is bubbling up a little bit. It's bowing up a little bit because of the, um, I guess it's it's not as good as the arches because I don't think the arches does that um, very much. But um, it's it, it will lay down once it dries, so that's okay. But, um, so I'll be back. Okay, so um, welcome back. This is dry and I'm just going to press down this tape again. 
Um, as you can see, it dried mostly flat, but um, it did raise up on this tape. And this tape's not very good um, that I'm using. I just seem to run out of masking tape, so um, I'll have to order some more. But um, I have just this masking tape underneath it to give it a little elevation. I forgot to mention that earlier. And on this side I have another one that I was working on earlier. But um, now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip my paintbrush in clean water and I'm going to go in and just mix up this puddle of paint that I have here. and. Um, I'm going once it's mixed up I'm just gonna take a little bit of this paint gray here and uh, dip in into it and make a darker mix for the um, mountains in the distance You just keep on going till you get the um, the color that you want. This um, looks like a purpley sh shadow color right now, so I think that's about good. All right, so um, my paper is dry, and I'm just gonna paint over the dry paper with this color, and. Um, want to kind of think how you want your mountains to be. Um, I think I'm going to go curve mine down and go like that. And if you if you want to um, you can take a credit card or a um, store card. This is a gift card. And you can just, while the paint is still wet, you can go in and just scrape in some texture that looks kind of like mountains or rocks. Like that. I don't think my page was my paint was wet enough, so I'm gonna redo it. And if you want distant mountains in the background, you can, you you could do them first and just do it a lot lighter. And then come back in, get some more of the paints gray, make it darker, and then go over. So the dark, the darkness of the mountains is what makes that brightness of the light area um, really pop. So I'm going to take this card and I'm just going to kind of just scrape. You just have to play around with it till you get it kind of the way you want. Now I wouldn't do the one in the background because you uh, really don't want texture in the background mountains. You kind of just want the texture in the um, foreground mountain. And you can make it darker if you want to in areas. And um, that's about it for this little demonstration. I just wanted to do a little quick um, 
a little quick demo and show you. Now, um, I can see right now that the paint has went underneath this tape or the tape has came up a little bit. Do you see that? When I take off the tape. So, um, this tape is not very good. It did fine up here before we had all the paint that, it, you know, before the paper buckled and raised it up. But um, I just wanted to show you a quick and easy little demo how to paint a little, um, a little landscape. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you liked it, please let me know in the comments and consider uh, subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Have a great day and happy painting.